Right, here we go. This, these are the inlets from the much vaunted and rightfully vaunted YF23. And look what you can see. You can see the compressor face. So it's from this book by Paul Metz. I'm going to click on the other webcam. Now, Paul Metz has the distinction of being the only person who has flown both the YF23 and the F-22. So you can see here that it said that one diameter outboard and below the compressor face. So we'll have a look at that and then we'll compare it to the SU-57 and we'll mention the blocker that they're using. So first of all, some images. I'm going to check that I'm actually showing these images right. All right, so as you can see, curvature there and then a from by the legend that is mike badrock see the curvature so so I'm, this one the black one is black widow and the gray one is gray ghost so that's pav 2 gray ghost and there you can see now apparently they call they made these so big because they were going to fit thrust of them sorry thrust reversers and these because I'll, I'll talk about the nos the nozzles later on you can see these little pores here for cooling right again this is for so the russians know what's inside an f-22 apparently well uh good guess a little bit of a curvature there and you get a little bit of a curvature from this sidewinder here because it will you know be curved in for that compartment so people would say look at this from the front you can't see the compressor face that's like bang on and then there's another one you can't see although you might say it's lighting but if you look here if you did a curve based on this and you were to make that round into a circle you would say that that is about one can Presser face away from the inlet, from the inlet, just as they said for this one, where they said one engine diameter outboard and below. So if we go back to there, now if we go to here, this is the notorious image where people say, "Ah, look, you can see the compressor face," but you could see it also on that one, on the YF23, and that is regarded as being stealthier. Than the f-22 so but if we look at this angle we can't see the compressor face and again if you were to based on this because this is represented you can work out the you know so if you know the size of the so you know the size of the compressor face it's probably some of it is going to be visible but what does it have it has, and it mentions it here, and I've taken this for an article. In addition to the S-tunnel, there are some blockers, some veins, inlet veins which are made of composites and coated in RAM. Right, and it was also mentioned in this video by, I think this guy is called HM119. And I only had two really good videos on the on the PACFA uh, and he's uh, taken them down so he says that these are the blockers and again here's an, a comparison from an early uh, where you can see the curvature of the intake now we're going to talk uh, about the nozzles now these nozzles here where you've got these uh, tri little triangles. They are good at, they are stealthy in X band for the wavelength, where the wavelength is shorter than that distance. But they're not good in uh, for longer wavelengths. But the, the SU 57 was not designed as a penetrating. Uh, aircraft to go through American air defenses. 
it's what is the name of the whole project? It's prospective aviation complex of frontal aviation. So it's going to probably be designed to destroy the enemy defenses rather than go into them. Whereas the, because I've got it in this Northrop YF-23 ATF book, that the whole, there was a massive emphasis on all round stealth to go up uh, against Soviet SAMs because there were a lot of aircraft losses in Vietnam due to SAMs. Right, so, uh, so we've got these, and this is the new engine, and as you can see, it's not, it's a little bit shorter than, than the Mark I engine. F-22 nozzles. Uh, so these are the nozzles, so this is the new engine. And as you can see here, F-22 nozzles. Now this was from, this was made by the channel Zvezda, which is Star, which is a, a military channel in Russia. And this, and apparently, is not the head of um, United Aircraft Corporation anymore, but Mikhail Pogosyan was the guy who was the head of the project about these nozzles. And this is, as you can see, this is a, a caption from that. So if you watch that two-parter on that channel about the PACFA, and then they actually said, good results have been achieved. And for this reason, it's not excluded that flat nozzles can be installed on the Russian fifth generation fighter later. So, oh yes. People who say there's problems with the SU-57. Well, the YF-22, or I don't know which one, but there was a crash in 92. And you can see the changes here between the two uh, aircraft. I mean, look at the, I mean, the pilot has vision obscured here. M much better view there. The wing is a different shape. The tail planes are a different shape. The nozzles have been redesigned. Quite a lot of changes. And what else became a good aircraft but had a lot of problems at the start? The flanker. What is it? Fly, flanker A flew in 1977. There were big problems with oscillation. It had to be completely redesigned by Simonov. And the flanker B did not fly until about 1984. So an aircraft can start off with problems and then end up becoming a really good aircraft. Right. I think that will be the end of the video. So compress the face, but you can put some radar absorbent a blocker on there, just like on the Hornets. Uh, and then here, like I said, you can see it there. All right. But like I said, that is a very good book. And you've even got blueprints of the YF-23 in that book, written by Paul Metz, who apparently was also an engineer because they thought it was helpful to have test pilots who were also engineers because they could speak the same language to the, the non-flying engineers. Right, I'm going to end this hangout now. Oh, I'll stop the share screen. Now I'll end the hangout. But there you go, Peter Sheriff.